Today in the Chokeslam Wrestling Report, we're going to do our weekly wrestling roundup, and we're also going to be talking about Impact Rebellions and Windy City Riot New Japan Wrestling Event. This all happened during the weekend, last weekend. We're going to review that. We're also going to have a special guest, Michael J. Sarantino from the Turnbuckle Tabloid, join us today to talk about WWE storylines and AEW's TNT title. Is it tainted or not? We're going to have that and much more on the Chokeslam Wrestling Report. Welcome to another episode of the Choke Slam Wrestling Report. And today I have a special guest, uh, a gentleman that I met in the House of Glory, and he is part of the Turnbuckle Tabloid crew, Mr. Michael J. Sorrentino. How are you, buddy? How's everything? I'm good. How are you, man? I'm good, bro. You know, uh, been trying to catch up all this damn wrestling. Uh, but this is a perfect time to have you because yesterday – as I, we were talking about, you know, what time we're going to meet up on this podcast, releases were made by NXT. And you watch NXT more than I do because I don't watch NXT. But one of the people that they let go was, I know, Dakota Kai and the other uh, Michael Bivens, uh, cool. Lo Loomis, that I, I know that you love that guy. And there's another guy there. They said oh, he's going to be the next uh, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Oh, so, the guy that's been with Joe Gacy for the past couple of months. Yeah. So give me your thoughts on, on these releases. I mean, they already started with NXT. You think are they going to start doing the main roster next week, or you know, or what? What's your thoughts on these? Well, with these four releases, it's not obvious why they got released. Because with Michael Bivens, yeah, Michael Bivens, that's his, that was the NXT name. He told them that he wasn't going to resign, so yeah. that's one of the reasons why they got rid of him. Uh, Dakota, I think the same reason. The other two, uh, Harland and Dexter Lewis. Harland was reportedly apparently not improving in the ring, so they just said, fuck it, just get rid of you. Mm. He, already, he already posted on his Twitter saying that he, like, he's ready to go for his new journey, whatever it is. And Dexter Lewis, his gimmick was like he was painting a picture for Vince McMahon, and he just finished it, and then they called him and said, oh, you're fired. Oh, wow. That, that yeah. And it's funny, because Dexter Lewis, I remember, I remember him from Impact. He had right. this, he had... Yeah. Yeah, and he had this uh that that gimmick like some kind of uh, like a stalker type. I saw him again in NXT. He almost had something similar to that. It's the exact same gimmick, except in NXT he's mute. In yeah. NXT, what's that again? In NXT he's mute. He doesn't speak. Oh wow! So I or see. I... Stare at people and, and give like like gestures like I'm gonna kill you, like that type of thing. Now the Dakota Kai, I was very surprised that they let her go because uh, I mean I would have thought they would they would have moved her up. Into the uh, main roster, and the, I first pers I personally and, felt like she didn't improve at all. Yeah, the the fucked up thing about Dakota Kai is that we, on the program they've been teasing she's been going to challenge Mandy Rose next. Hmm. So and, so I, so. And this week, I think they did like a backstage thing where they with uh, Toxic Attraction took her out. So that, I think that's what they wrote her off now. That's oh wow! I mean, yeah. I mean. NXT doesn't look nothing like the NXT back. I don't even know what the hell is going on in there. I know LA Knight, they moved him to the main roster. Yeah, uh, he's, he's like a fashion uh, thing now. He has Mason. Now he has I think he's going to have a faction, yeah. And I think they, they I think they, Mace. Mansoor. But, uh, I'm like, and who else? Mansoor. Mansoor is going to be part of that? Yeah, they did a thing where he introduced Mansoor. Mansoor cut his hair short and he has a suit now. Oh, shit. Damn, that's a, that's how I don't really keep up with what's yeah. going on because I know Mansoor the last time I saw him. Those are the dark things they did before SmackDown. Because he was in the lumberjack last I thought, well, last week he was in the lumberjack. I saw him on the floor lumberjack. Yeah, uh, he had like a short. He did have short hair. Yeah, but, he changed so, back his old gimmick for the, for the show. <laughs> but during the oh dark, oh my goodness, he did his new gimmick. Now, and I know last night. Last night I was also watching SmackDown. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden now, they're not doing the unification match for the okay. tag team titles. What's your thought on that? It's so stupid. I, I assume they're going to do it on TV, but I guess, I guess the, they didn't want to have Roman or Drew off the pay-per-view. It's so stupid. 
But I thought Roman was hurt. I guess not anymore. He was working the house shows this week. And so now, now that we on Roman, and this was originally originally the uh, the question I wanted to ask you was, right now besides Drew McIntyre, because I think they I think they're pushing this too fast with the Drew McIntyre right. stuff. Besides him, who do you think could dethrone Roman Reigns? Being that right now SmackDown, besides Drew McIntyre, there's nobody. Mm-hmm. Raw, besides I think Seth Rollins and maybe Cody. Right. Who else do you think in there? Let's say take those three guys out of there. Who you think in there that could say could be a hot baby face to challenge Roman Reigns? I mean, it's a long shot to say this person, but a guy like Ricochet, someone like him, like that could be a, a, one of the big upsets. Mm. Right now he has the Intercontinental title and he's facing Jinder Mahal or fucking Shanky on TV. So it'd be it'd be months for them to build him up to face Roman Reigns at least. No. Uh, I got a guy like him because like, he's currently positioned as the number two babyface behind Drew on SmackDown. And also say, say in a couple months if they bring this guy up, uh, Braun Breaker, R- Rick Steiner's kid. Yeah. But he's still guy. green, though. He's still green. Yeah, yeah but Vince doesn't give a shit. Yeah, that does. Look at Braun Breaker and say, like, this guy is big as Roman Reigns and he can fet- match him physically. Yeah. I mean, I-, I saw that yesterday. I was like, how in the world you've been – You've been uh, pretty much advertising a unification match for over a month. Right. And now all of a sudden you take it out because you need to have McIntyre and Roman Reigns in this pay-per-view. Yeah. And I'm like, you just suck at then everybody who probably say, oh, or probably bought the pay-per-view by now. I mean, not for the people who have Peacock, but that shit is freaking free for whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, they kind of jerk the fucking, their, their fan base with this. Yeah. But then again, if you think about it, right, you've seen these guys go one on one, right? Yeah. Um, did they fought? They haven't fought yet, right? They haven't fought one on one on one as far as the tag team, right? We mean with Drew, with Drew. Like, like, no, no, without Drew, without uh, RKO against the Usos. They, they have they wrestled each other before? Yeah, it was that Survivor Series. The, the Survivor one. Series. Survivor Series, really? Yeah, they, they did champions versus champions even back then. Oh, okay. And who won that? Uh, RK Bro. Mm. I was there in the building that building that night. The finish was um the I said the Barkley, right? Yeah. One of the Usos was coming down for Uso Splash and Randy Carnware RKO. Mm. Because I, I'm like I'm saying to myself, why would they push this? Then they had them one on one every week, and then all of a sudden they're taking it out. There, there gotta be something in there. But I can only mean, think of two. The two the first one would probably be nobody was probably gonna buy the show with that as the main event on its own. Yeah. Is they probably want to save it for TV for a big rating. Mm. Unless they know something yeah. about AEW is doing something that, that they want to put that in the rating. Because, you know, the only time they do that shit is because AEW is doing something and, you know, either I mean, Wednesday or... AEW has a title on the line. I guess WWE's like, we need to put something on TV to give the fans a reason to watch. They were, the only thing I know the next week they're doing is the women's uh, the Ring of Honor unification match. Yeah. Which is... Which is Mercedes Martinez versus uh, my girl Diana. Yeah. So um, that's the only match that I know, and I think uh, Morrissey is making his debut next week. It's, yeah, um, it's either him or it's freaking Enzo. You think it's Enzo? I hope. I I, 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 hope, I hope not, but it's not it's, Enzo because one, uh, one of the likely it's going to be Cass or Morris, whoever name he's going to go. Yeah, by. yeah. Because uh, yesterday I saw yesterday's rampage and Sean Spears said he's seven feet. So it's Morrissey. Um, but that's the only thing I could think of. Are you going to get that on free TV? That, that, means I, that means they don't give a fuck about making money because that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a main event in any uh, pay-per-view. Well, the main match they want is Wardlow and MJF. And that's definitely going to happen. No, I'm talking about the, uh, the unification tax. Oh, yeah. Well, it all depends on when the next Ring of Honor show is going to be. Everybody's still in the dark on that. No, so. I mean... I, I, I don't know, but that's uh, you know it's funny. I was I was watching Rampage yesterday. I'm like they they're defending the unif- uh the Ring of Honor titles in on TV on Dynamite. So I'm saying when the hell they're gonna bring they're gonna get a, a, a channel to put the rest of the Ring of Honor stuff. You know, but you know Tony Khan will come up with something. I'm sure, but um you know I I don't know. But right now, like I said, um 
you know, as far as, as Roman Reigns is concerned, I, I, I don't know why they're doing this. But to me, it's just, uh, I think they suck at everybody as far as the, I mean. Being okay. bad, I, you know, I mean, if we're thinking about a bad choice for just for someone to beat Roman, it would be definitely Omos. He's a guy that's like, that's legit 7-4 and, and is not ready. I mean, No, he's not. I mean, Bobby Lashley could be another option, but also it's, like, it's time to bring up a new star. Like, Bobby Lashley's almost 50 years old. He's not going to be around much longer. <laughs> He's, he's, like, yeah, like he's almost 50 years old. He still looks great, but he's not going to be around much longer. No, that, that, that's the, this is what I was talking to people and on the line on the last half of House of Glory show that I was like, if you look at it, you gave both belts to, to, to Roman. Mm -hmm. Now you have... Uh, Raw doesn't have a world champion. Yes. So, you know, they're just throwing any fucking show there. You know, the only thing that would suck is that this like, doesn't mean it's like, the belts are unified. It'll say, like, Roman defends both belts against two different opponents. He loses one of them. That's the part that's going to suck. So, so basically, so if he defends the belt, he gets to choose which belt he's defending. He's not defending both? No, like, say, like, a Raw superstar wins a number one championship for the WWE title, then he has to defend against that. And then Drew will oh. get the shot. But, so that means like, they're never going to do the Dan Brand split then? Yeah. But it's the same shit. You just they're just hyping people up. I mean, at, at this point, if they keep doing releases, the brand split's gonna be over with. No, I mean, I I, I don't understand it. I mean, it'll be time to unify the world titles, the women's titles, and the tag titles at this point. Yeah, I mean, well, the women's tag titles just that's the only one that I know as far that I'm like, okay, they haven't done a, a Raw or SmackDown women's tag team, which is good. You yeah, have those girls go both shows and do their thing, you know. So, yeah. uh, did you see SmackDown yesterday? Uh, yeah, I, I read the spoilers from last week because I know this the show was taped. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that because I saw when 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 Roman got thrown by this guy. I'm looking at, it, I'm like, wait a minute, they did not see that was on. But the Ronda Rousey uh, beat the challenge shit. Oh my god, that woman has getting worse and worse every week. Is it me or this woman can't wrestle for shit no more? Okay, I lost you. I can't hear you. Hold on a second. You hear me? You hear me, yeah, man? Nah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I didn't hear what you said. You already went out. Okay. Uh, I said that Ronda Rousey was uh, doing that beat the clock challenge, and she was against Shotzi Blackheart. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw the match, but that shit was fucking horrible. It's, all, it's, all, it's, it's always horrible when... You have an inexperienced person against someone that has a little experience and you're timed. Yeah. Like, the beat the clock turn just usually sucks how, all, yeah. the, all the time. And then Charlotte Flair and Aaliyah wasn't good either. Yeah. Oh, Aaliyah's horrible. I'm surprised yeah, they haven't caught her So when them two came out, I was like, you actually remember these two on the roster? Like, where the fuck is also Zia Lee? Like, you called her back in October. She's barely on TV. That's right. Wow. Yeah. So she wasn't she feuding with Natalia, some Natalia shit. and Sonia Deville. Like they gave Zayla like some like comic book type in, like introduction. Yeah, remember it was, it was, on the fucking screen, it would literally say "pow" or "wow." Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is what is happening? Fucking watching Batman, the old school Batman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of your entrance. Yeah, and I, yeah, you, wow, that's a name I haven't heard in a while. Because yeah. they brought she was in NXT right at one point, and they brought her. Right. Up. They, they brought her up in the draft. Back in October, I, I can't. I, I can't. I, I don't know. I don't know what. Well, they bring back Oscar back on Raw, which is the which is a good thing. But also, we're not waiting for Bailey at this point. So Oscar is back. Oscar's back on Raw. She's gonna feud with Becky. That's again, Becky. You gonna feud with Becky? I'm like, how many times we saw this during the pandemic? Yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be weird too because it's not with the title because Bianca has the title at the moment. The Bianca right now is feuding with. She just finished her feud with Sonya. Sonya, and the question is, why is Sonya Deville getting a title shot? And it's funny because I read something this week about how WWE is thinking about doing a ranking system, right? Yeah. And I'm well, like, I they got that idea from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I'm saying to myself, you haven't used a ranking system since the 1980s and 90s. Now all of a sudden you want to use a ranking system, but yet they claim that AEW is not it's not competition. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm like. But then you put Sonya Deville, who hasn't wrestled anybody 
you know, particularly I could say, oh, shoot, she beat her, so she's the number one contender. Yeah. You give her a title shot, and yet, she, she, you know, she's an authority figure. Yeah, so it's like, but she should be honestly. She should have came back as a wrestler after that, after she took that break from from the stalker. She got fired against Mandy Rose, which was like her best was, was her best moment, honestly. Because I I know she when she came yeah, back, she turned on Mandy and mm-hmm. became psycho. Mm-hmm. Like her heel work, her promo work was getting better, and then the whole stalker shit. She had to go away for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then when she came back, she became an authority figure. I'm like, okay, yeah. what's wrong with this picture? Because because this man had a fucking fetish for her in suits. <sighs> Unbelievable. <laughs> anyway, so let, let, let's talk about this AEW this week, and, and I, I know that AEW. I can say they have, they have brought some good matches as far as uh, uh, like dream matches, matches to me. Well, to me that I like to see. But this on, Sammy me, Guevara shit. Hold on, give, give me a second. I have to go downstairs for a quick second. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll okay. He's <clears throat> All right. All right. So let. I mean, you saw the whole entire AEW um, Dynamite this week. Yeah, I mean, oh. it was a weird look. At, it was a weird show until the main event. He <laughs> said, "Weird show." Why do you mean a weird show? I mean, you had the undisputed elite looking like the fucking Ginyu Force out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the, yeah, yeah. Did you, the, did you facing each other doing Owen and Brett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a good match. I, I can't. Yeah. I, I can't. Um, the way they started it was it wasn't bad at all. The show. Mm-hmm. I just the thing I think most tarnishing one was the main event. Mm-hmm. Uh, you think they're trying to do uh, what Cody Rhodes was supposed to be doing with Brandy and AEW, but now Sammy and Ty is doing it? Oh God! Just the thought of just the thought of them to doing what they're doing now. <laughs> oh my God! I mean, not the part, <laughs> not the part of the tongue kissing shit, but yeah. as far as uh, like a couple, like this, I guess a couple. Uh, you know, yeah, I guess maybe, but. Mm. I mean, Brandon was already healed to begin with. Yeah. Let's be real. She's been, she was dumb fans to go fuck themselves every time she came up for a promo. And then with Cody, she'd be like, oh, hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because to me is, the way I look at it is, they took the bell away from Scorpio Sky. I think it was his first defense or second defense? Some shit like that. First defense. Uh, it was his only defense. His only defense. Yeah. So they pretty much did, they did a Cody, a Cody Sammy shit all over again. Mm-hmm. And they gave him the belt for the third time. And the funny thing is, I was listening to commentary. They're making it look like Sammy was still the fan favorite when he beat Scorpio. Mm-hmm. And now this week, they go and kind of correct it. And do you see that as a pro- – first of all, did they have tarnished the TNT title by doing that? And do you see that being a problem with AEW when they see the fan reaction and now they got to fix it the following week or two weeks later? I mean – the way they've been booked, I, I wouldn't say they tarnish it. I just say that I think they just don't know what the hell they're doing. I think they, mm. they're going like show by show, literally, and seeing what the reaction is. Because I think when Sammy won it, everybody was kind of pissed off. Like, oh, let's 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 redo it. Let's just put the belt back on Scorpio. But I think I thought that when Scorpio won, I didn't want him to win the title at, at all. You didn't I want Scorpio to win the first time when he when he beat really? Sammy when because I thought. I didn't see the appeal of Scorpio when he was a heel teammate with Ethan Page. I thought Sammy should have lost to somebody else, but I guess with now what they do a freaking double turn, Scorpio's, I think, a baby face now. I don't know. Well, I don't know. The way he looked at Frank Azaria and Lambert was looking, Lambert and um, Ethan well, Page they, were looking at them, were like, what the hell is he doing in the ring? Azarian basically said, you have your title shot, Ethan no. Page. He looked at them and said, what the fuck? Yeah, but I, I have a feeling that he probably he is going to give him the title shot, but He's gonna show his uh, Scorpio's gonna t- show his uh, his uh, heel turn and, and and probably cheat or something. That's the only thing I could think of. But uh, I think I think this thing with them doing this like double heel turn type shit, like I, I don't understand. And it's always I don't know if it's me, but every week they got some non-sanction, no disqualification. These, especially with the with the Andrade's uh, family office, they always in some with Darby and some uh, bullshit fucking fighting in the crowd. Yeah. Do you like that or not? I mean, because I can't stand. I've been I'm beginning to hate that shit. 
Eh, I don't mind it. I think I think there's gonna be a point where it gets insane. Like I think for me, it was when they kept doing the lights out gimmick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was like getting stupid, but I think when the, when the gimmick match that is needed for it, especially Andrade and Darby, that was the blow off. Just to see the visual of Sting doing Sting things and put the Sting mask on, and just be like, "Hey, I'm Sting." And yeah, 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 yeah. His dad clothes beating up fucking private party it was funny as hell. And throw and throw himself from the top of the damn thing. Never on throw the top. Him just falling, just falling forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind. Cause I mean, he's sixty something years old. He's still doing stuff that you know that that younger guys are doing now. But it it, it gets kind of boring because it looks like to me every time. The, the family office fighting Darby. They in the middle of some fighting in the crowd or whatever. It's like a repeat to me, so, you know. So, um, but overall, what what do you see as far as the the worst to me? Uh, the Jericho Appreciation Society. What do you think about that story? Uh, there's been uh, Jericho is always a love hate relationship. It's always when he's a face, I can stand him. When he's a heel, it's like okay, I can tolerate him. Mm-hmm. But it's never like, oh, I'm, I'm a big Jericho fan. It's like, okay, Jericho's going to do what Jericho does. And, but I know where this is going. It's double or nothing time, and they're going to do a stadium stampede. I just know they're going to do that bullshit again. Well, who, who you think they're going to bring the next two guys? I mean, because uh, so the, 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 only ones, the, the only ones that are coming in my head right now is probably Homicide. Mm-hmm. Maybe uh, Hernandez. Hernandez. Those are two good options, but if they don't, if they feel like they, if they're not available for that in AEW on the AEW current roster, I would think either Darby and Sting or the Hardys, the team mm. of Santana Ortiz and Kingston. That, that's 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 interesting. That's very interesting. And what do you think about the Warlord storyline? I, I I think that's one of my favorite storylines right now. I li- I like what they're doing with Warlord. They're doing what they did with Batista back in the day, basically building up a monster and having a moment. Beat up the fucking chicken shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was surprised. The thing with M. Jeff is, is that I know he should. I guess he should lose the world, but it's also like he needs to be in position for the world title at this point. Yeah, is it me or, or, or M. J. Don't hardly wrestle anymore? Barely, he barely wrestles on TV at the moment. Like the last thing he did was against Sean Dean, but that was for a storyline purpose. Yeah, yeah. And the last good match he had was with CM Punk at that door collar match. So it's yeah. been over. Almost two months he hasn't been in a in a main event type uh wrestling match. But yeah. and I think right now that's about the only thing I know that AEW has because right now I think they uh as far as uh, Don Cal is coming out uh, and was it revolution and yeah. dropping the uh like the the seed for the Kenny Omega versus Adam Cole few. Um and I liked what they're doing because they, they they're letting people wonder, you know what I'm saying? But my big question on that one is why is Jay White involved in that? Are they going to merge the Bullet Club with the Undisputed Elite or what? What's your, what's your thought on that? I mean, that whole thing is so convoluted. It's, it's like it makes my head spin half the time because it's like, okay, who's <laughs> with who? Because there's going to be one point where it's like, oh, Jay White's like, oh, I'm not with you. I'm going to be with Kenny. Like that, like I'm just like, t- anticipating that bullshit. I'm waiting for the Good Brothers to get back. Like, it's it's going to be a giant mess. I think the Good Brothers are going to resign with uh, Impact. I-, I see that happening because. Um... Uh, I, they, Impact can't afford to lose the Good Brothers anyway because they, you know, they don't have a good tag team division to begin with. Well, so, not at the Briscoes at this point. Yeah, but you know what? They see Impact. They did. They already did the multi multiverse with the Briscoes versus the Good Brothers already. So now you're gonna put it back in it, just an Impact. I already saw that match, so that's not that's not no, gonna no, interest I think, me. I think the Briscoes would be replacing the Good Brothers on the roster. I think AEW would bring the Good Brothers in for the the Ball Club. On this video, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that makes more sense. After double or nothing, we have forbidden door now. Yeah, because and, and, and I'm I'm gonna, I'm not too happy because that's on a Sunday. Good yeah. news, that shit ends at fucking midnight. I missed, I missed the interviews being on a Saturday. Yeah, it was it was bad. I, I thought they would go back to Saturdays, but I think WWE then started doing Saturdays now. Mm-hmm. So they probably they took that slot. Right. So you know, I mean, I don't care if I got I mean, I got I gotta get up at five thirty in the morning to go to work, but. I, I don't mind watching, staying up that late. But anyway, guys, thank you for coming into my show. Plug out your stuff. You got a podcast, right? Called General Admission, something like that. Are you host? Uh, it, it was all podcasts we used to do, but it's just and now it's just a page that we have. But oh, okay, so plug in your stuff, guy. I will see on Terminal Tab at Terminal Tab. Uh, if you want to follow me personally, it's at M underscore Serentino five thirty. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, so I saw you. I think uh, was it last week in Jay's podcast? Yeah, we the last time the last thing we did was the ROH the uh, brand split. Didn't you do the tag? No, the tag team. He was by himself. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah the tag team he did by himself. Yeah, we got it. We got to do a, 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 a three way here. Um, maybe whoa, whoa, maybe whoa. next. <laughs> Not that type of thing. <laughs> I don't roll that way. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So, yo, thanks for coming in, bro. You're welcome you. anytime, bro, to come on my podcast. Give your thoughts, whatever. Maybe I'll have you on the next. What's the next pay-per-view for WWE? The, what is it? Next week. Next uh, Sunday, right? That's a mini backlash. Yeah, it's May 8th. I, just, I thought it was this Sunday. I, I thought it was tomorrow. It's actually in a fucking week. Yeah, it's next Sunday. I think next Sunday. It's yeah. on Mother's Day, I think. Yeah. That Great. fucking sucks. <laughs> you know, All right, guys. So thanks for coming in, bro. I appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned. We will have more of the Chokeslam Wrestling Report. And there you have it. Mr. Michael J. Sarantino came through to talk to us about the storylines that are going on in WWE, the releases that happened at um, this, uh, actually yesterday with the NXT. So I really don't have to really talk about it. We pretty much... Spoke, spoke about what happened i mean michael biven was one of the guys who didn't want to sign for nxt uh he pretty much felt like he didn't need to sign with them and he wanted to sign so they got rid of him the supposedly future brock lesnar he got let go i forgot his name of uh he was tagging up with somebody i don't i don't remember who it was but this is nxt 2.0 i don't know what they doing WWE again, I don't know what they're doing as far as that is concerned. I spoke about what is going on with the Roman Reigns. They decided not to do the unification match for WrestleMania Backlash between RK Bro and the Usos. They decided, you know, I don't know what kind of pay-per-view is going to be because let me tell you, I watched SmackDown last night and it was like the most pitiful stuff that i ever seen is matches after matches the same bullcrap matches you see every week so let's talk a little bit about um last week we uh i wanted to talk about the um uh impact uh the impact um rebellion also windy city riot windy city riot had a couple of matches uh that was very interesting uh, we saw some AEW guys go in, uh, QT Marshall, uh, Camarado, and Solo. They ended up defeating the LA Dojo guys, uh, Clark Connors, Carl Fredericks, and Yuta Anemora. The factory defeated the LA Dojo, supreme proving that the factory is better than the LA Dojo. Well, we all know that's not true, but I guess that's a little storyline they're doing there. Team Filthy versus Fred Rosser, Red Neverita, Chris Dickinson, Alice Coughlin, and Josh Alexander. Fred Ross of the team win, but Ross didn't let go of his chicken wing, and Tom Lola ended up coming into the ring and, you know, tried to stop him. They jumped Fred Ross, and then Nagata came out to his A. Uh, Yuri Nagata versus Tom Lola was the open weight title match of the night. Uh, pretty much, Lola defeated Nagata with a sleeper. It was a great match between two guys with submission holds, and this is the type of wrestling I like. When did you got the old school versus the new school? Right now, um, Tom Lola, I don't know who's going to beat him for that open weight title. That man has had that belt almost a year in New Japan Strong. I don't see nobody beating him. You know what I'm saying? So that's, it's crazy. The United Empire versus Bullet Club with Scott Norton and, a, uh, I guess, an honorary member of the Bullet Club. Scott Norton still has it. He's, this man is still powerful to this day. Uh, so that was, you know cool but united empire who right now they have a they have a tag team there called the ussies cup or whatever they call they're from new uh, they're from london and those guys are no joke they took control of the mat and then defeated bullet club um um on, on saturday i think it was that they had this um badu tito jonah and shane hayes who used to be uh uh i think t-bar or crowbar whatever he brought his name was from uh from the uh whatever the name of, i forgot the name of the team over there in, in wwe so shane hayes is now in new japan strong him bad dude tito and jonah wrestle against uh brody king and finn juice it was a street match a street fight and that match was all over the place 
I mean, I suggest you guys, if you want to see the Windy City Riot New Japan Strong pay-per-view, the last one they just had, I suggest you to get in Fight TV. It is worth everything. And this match was everything you could imagine with, uh, it was a wild match. And uh, Brody King and Finn Juice ended up beating Jonah, Badu, Tito, and Shane Hayes. Shoya Umino was the one who accepted the USA, USJ White Challenge and Umino, who is Red Shoe's son, the referee from New Japan, came out to wrestle Jay White. It was a good match, but Jay White catches Umino with the Blade Runner to win that match. Ishii versus Suzuki, two old school cats, and when these two go at it, I love it because this is chop fast all day and they go back and forth uh, pretty much. And Ishii ends up winning the match against Minoru Suzuki. Of course, Minoru Suzuki is traveling all over the United States, so. Uh, that is cool to see. Um, so he in there going at it with the best in the world in New Japan. Um, so, um, but then after Ishii gets the win, Eddie Kingston confronts him. And I guess these two guys are going to go at it for Capital Collision coming up, I believe, is in May. So that's the school. Osprey versus John Moxley. This was the main event of the day of the night, actually. And let me tell you, they did not disappoint. Moxley was bleeding like a skunk pig all over the place, and it looks like there was controver controversy in this match because apparently um, Moxley pinned, um, how you call it? Uh, he pinned Will Ospreay. He thinks that he his shoulder was up before the three count. There was a lot of you know confusion. Moxley then put Osprey. In a in a in a in a chokehold, he tapped. Then they said that he got pinned. So it looks like this is the second time I seen Will Osprey in a match where there's controversy. So and Will Osprey is supposed to be coming next month to House of Glory to go at, go at it with Low Key. That's gonna be interesting. Uh, the last time Will Osprey was at House of Glory was when he wrestled. Um, uh, amazing red that was a classic match between these guys i mean i saw it live and you can't ask for nothing better than that so that was cool rebellion impact wrestling impact wrestling of course had the um the rebellion pay-per-view the, the beginning of the pay-per-view of course they had jay white versus steve macklin and chris Saban. macklin ended up with a cool ass face paint looking more like a bullet club member with that face paint uh, Macklin went for a shoulder spear on Sabin, but flew out the ring. He hit hard, and though Macklin gets the win after after Sabin hit White with a cradle shot, Macklin sneaked in for the win, and he beats um, you know Sabin and White. So that was very interesting. And that's the guy that I was talking about last week. And I couldn't remember who was the one that beat White at the Multiverse um, in the big uh, WrestleMania weekend, and it was Sabin who beat. Uh, he ended up being Jay White. Triple A, Reina de Reina title match between Talia Valkyrie and Deanna Perrazzo. This was a very good match, but uh, I hate to say it for all these Impact Wrestling fans, but it looks like Deanna Perrazzo probably will be leaving Impact because she lost the Reina and Reina match to Talia Valkyrie. Valkyrie, who never lost the belt, but had to give it up when she went to WWE, gets the belt back, and what that means, most likely, Miss Deanna Perrazzo might end up with AEW, yes, you might don't like it, but it's the facts, whether you like it or not. And and this is one thing I'm kind of questioning: why all of a sudden Impact is over, Impact Rebellion was over, and now they are questions. Will Morrissey is supposed to be making his his debut next week at, at AEW? I love how people question me. Where's the source? Well, if you watch AEW and you saw Dynamite this week, you would know that this name was mentioned, and not literally. But we know we're not stupid we know who we're wrestling fans for a reason um so that uh pretty much uh you know and and with the fact that diana Peraza is defending the ring of honor against the interim champion mercedes martinez next week that's another sign so you know exhibition triple threat match ace austin versus speedball bailey versus trey miguel ace austin ends up with being uh well and so i think he pinned uh, if i'm correct he ended up pinning, uh, I think, Speedball Bailey won a little training girl, but Ace Austin becomes a three-time X Division champion. This guy should be the world champion by now, and they still 
Impact don't know what to do with this guy. This guy is amazing. I seen him live. I seen him wrestle live. He has all the potentials to be a uh, Impact World Champion. But there goes to show you right there. Jonah versus Tama Hero Ishii. This match was hard hitting with Jonah dominating the match, but Ishii comes back and ends up hitting his brain buster on Jonah, which was incredible. Good match. Um, and Ishii wins that match. The Impact World Tag Team title match with an 18 elimination. I'm sorry, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but to me, this elimination tag team was a waste of time. It did not. You know, it did not uh, got me all hyped up about it. The fact, first of all, when I saw, you know, uh, Jordan Grace teaming up with Morrissey, I'm like, what the hell is she's doing there? You know, they're trying to push her like they did with Tessa Blanchard for her to win uh, the women's, the, the men's world title. If they do that, and this is what I'm saying, Impact, one minute they're looking good. Not, but this looks like a desperate move they're doing. Um, so, and she teamed up with Morrissey only for, for nothing because then, you know, the major players, I think they ended up pinning one of them or something happened to, to that effect. Chelsea was put through a table uh, with uh, Cardona and um, Myers. Uh, Swinging and Dice, that was a joke. I don't know why they brought these guys in there. It was a joke to me. That's the way I look at it. Um, so the Good Brothers got eliminated because of the uh, Taven and, uh, well, the Kingdom, Taven and Bennett. Um, hit the magic killer outside also oh I think they got hit with the magic killer outside but at the end it was Heath and Rhino versus BDK uh, Violent by Design not BDK I don't know what I call it BDK VBD uh, again what's up to me that was a waste of time that was not a good match at all I, I didn't like it knockouts title match Rosemary versus Tasha Steele still routines that even after Rosemary spray miss on Savannah um again they're pushing these old people that have been having there for almost seven ten years rosemary why are you still pushing this woman get new fucking blood in there get new people in there you know what i'm saying like come on i think uh they pulled the the russian whatever against diana peraza not long ago diana beat her so i i don't know i don't know what impact is doing and, and th this pay-per-view was not all that with the exception of the josh Alexander versus moves which was a great great match a great main event the main the and 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 Josh Alexander ended up being Moose um um to win the Impact World Champion. I think he hit him with that um I forgot what the, it's like a power driver move on him. Josh Alexander is one of the best wrestlers in the world. Okay, now you're trying to correct something you did six seven months ago. Now the correction is done, but now you got to bring in more people that could give uh, Josh Alexander a run for the money now because. Impact decided not to work with WWE. I mean, not WWE. Well, they were to work. They wanted to work with WWE, which was a stupid move, uh, because they didn't want to work with AEW. Now, again, you're looking from the outside. There's a lot of stuff going on in AEW, and I love how people just want to take pot shots at AEW. Right now, AEW is the hottest promotion right now because they're not only one promotion; they got two. Ring of Honor guys are in there, and they put those titles in there and there's complaints going around and one other Don digression was taken out of ae uh impact and other independent show yeah they're gonna take on because impact impact doesn't own john digression for nothing and he signed with aew you know what i'm saying and he suffered in concussion in his match against um who the hell he wrestled i forgot how he wrestled oh uh dalton castle so he was injured but then there was reported that he was going to show up at Rebellion, and that did not happen. So, I love how people ask me where my source is at. Uh, common sense. I don't need sources. It's common sense. So, you know, uh, um, I, I, I don't like to be questioned when I know for a fact where I get. I don't, I don't just pull out rabbits out of a hat, you know. So, I know what I'm talking about. Let's go to AEW this week. AEW this week, of course, uh, wasn't all that great. I'm going to keep it honest and, and truthful about it. Uh, AEW had a, a good beginning of a match when they had the um, Dax versus Cash. Dax Howard against Cash Wheeler in an Owen Hart qualifier match, which was a great match. It was, a, I guess, uh, a tribute to the Bret Hart versus Owen Hart match. Back at um, WrestleMania, uh, I believe it was 10. 
Um, so they did that. It was a great match between both guys, but Dax Harwood ended up winning the match by a roll up. So that was pretty good. They announced that CM Punk and Hangman Page will go one on one on double or nothing. Hangman Page supposedly was not in the show. There's word that he had that he had COVID. I don't know if it's true or not, but that was the word going around in these uh, these dirt sheets. Uh, that Scorpio Sky promo, the Combat Club, the Combat Club, uh, Blackpool Club, whatever, whatever they call it, the Moxley, Yuda, and uh, Danielson against the Factory. Willie Yuda comes out, comes home to Philadelphia, and ends up um, pinning Big Nick Camarado. I mean, to me, I don't think Camarado should have got the the pin. They should have given it to Solo because Camarado still, this guy could be. He could go places, and I don't know why AEW has him with QT Marshall. I don't understand that one. Uh, the Combat Club ends up Blackpool Combat Club ends up winning that match. Uh, Jurassic Express Pro Bowl Christian looks like he's going to be turning heel soon because he pretty much called out Jungle Boy a loser, and that's that's going to be interesting to for the next couple of weeks to come up. Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks challenged them. For the AEW tag team titles uh, again, I mean, I saw this coming. Christian turning on Jurassic Spread is gonna happen. Lance Archer versus Wardlow, one of the best storylines I like so far in AEW. Uh, Lance Archer versus Wardlow was everything you can imagine. MJF comes out, Archer attacked Wardlow by jumping over the rope like it was more of a of a uh, sometimes not even a. I don't know what you want to call it. He rolled, threw himself over the ring, and landed on Warlow. Warlow then, at one point, hit a Hurricanrana, which it was amazing to me for a guy that size to hit a Karana on Lance Archer. Warlow then hit a Senton, and then he powerbombed Lance Archer five times. I never seen anybody manhandle Lance Archer like Warlow did, and Warlow ends up winning the match. So now, the tease was that by um, MJF, uh, if you want to make some six-figure money, he said, I got somebody next week for you, Warlord, and you can't tease that. And, I mean, I knew it was Enzo, because Enzo is not bigger. He said he's bigger and stronger than Warlord. And it wasn't Enzo. I know it's not Enzo. So, I posted something on Twitter about that, and someone came at me, where's my source? If you watch AEW and whatnot, that's the source. I don't need no source. I don't need five foot select. I don't need uh, uh, what else? Uh, Wrestle talk. He said it, and again, it was repeated in rampages uh, fr- last night. Seven footer. Who's a seven footer? Who you can't tease that as Morrissey. And like I said, a lot. Of, I know a lot of Impact fans don't want a lot of these wrestlers leaving, but hey, Impact don't want to pay the money. You know what I'm saying? Impact doesn't want to pay the money, so that's what happens. You lose wrestlers, you know? Uh, what else? You saw the uh, Jer- uh, Jericho Appreciation Society. It looks like WWE, uh, AEW is mimicking WWE with these uh, contract signing or all this meeting. That's the way I look at that. Uh, at the end, it looked like, uh, you know, Eddie Kingston said, oh, you want to talk about doing a hit? Do you know what a hit is? Where we come from? We bury people. So, and during the end of the night, Jericho threw a fireball at Eddie Kingston outside the day attack of uh, uh, Santana Ortiz and JS. JS went end up throwing a fireball at Eddie Kingston. They went back to those Adula the Butcher, uh, how you call it, uh, chic type of style stuff, which is pretty good. I, I, I like that. We have the Sheeta versus Deeb. That uh, Hiroki Shida versus uh, Serena Deeb. This is a Philly street fight. Deeb wins the match. Um, she kept hitting um, Serena Deeb with, I mean, Shida with the uh, slamming her knee against the table, uh, not the table, the uh, the chair. So, and she ends up uh, making Shida tap out. So that was a good house of black. Goes up taking out Fuego. They look like they're gonna take Fuego's uh, mask off all of a sudden. They um, get interrupted by Alex and the Death Triangle. Pac appears. And would well, you thought that Alex was the one in the ring with a red robe? It happens to be Ray Phoenix. So Ray Phoenix is back. 
and this is going to be a war house of black versus a death triangle this is going to be good they announced uh big swerve versus darby for the rampage moving on like i said more state to debut next week the undisputed elite versus the varsity club lee johnson brock anderson dante martin this match was absolutely garbage i'm gonna keep it real this was garbage i don't know why they did this it's dumb the TNT title match, ladder match, Sammy and Scorpio. I spoke to with this with um, Mike uh, Sarantino. Uh, we didn't really get to this, but Scorpio hit a Spanish fly on a ladder with bar wide, which was really crazy. Uh, Scorpio wins the title for the second time, and Kazarian gets the first crack. This was a pretty good match. I just didn't like the fact that Tony Khan has been making mistakes where when it comes to changing of the title, TNT title. If they keep doing it, it's going to get tainted. That's the way I'm looking at it. Um, they didn't have to give Sammy the freaking belt at Battle of the Belt for the third time. Uh, if he was going to turn him heel, uh, if, he, that, if you thought that was the way to do it by cheating, then you should have never took the belt away from him this week. You know what I'm saying? Keep it that way. And if you're trying to pull Scorpio back as a fat favorite, that doesn't make sense because he's hanging around with Dan Lambert and ethan page so something is wrong with all this you know what i'm saying so it doesn't make any sense to me um but that's AEW for you so hopefully we'll see what happens news coming out of different sections of the wrestling world athena known as uh oh my god i forgot her name athena who used to be Amber Moon in WWE captured the Wrestling Women's Champ Warriors Wrestling Women's Championship at a tournament because um, Thunder Rosa uh, forfeited that belt because now she's doing commitments with AEW. So now she not she was the champion and now she's not doing that anymore. So she's no longer uh, the champion. So Athena, who used to be known as Amber Moon, wins the Warriors Women's Championship. At Warrior Wrestling 21. So that was last week. Jonathan Gresham. Of course we spoke about that. He was unable to compete at Impact Rebellion. He was replaced by Chris Bay. Um, so that. Um, supposedly that was the. The the, the news. Uh, but again. Jonathan Gresham. I know he had a concussion. The week before Rebellion. So, or a couple of days before Rebellion, and they mentioned it. Um, so, I don't know what was going on there. Jonah to show up uh, per appearance at Impact. He is not contracted by Impact. Don't know why Impact has not even tried to sign this man. This man is he's a big boy, and he knows how to move in that ring. And if I was Impact, I'd be smart and sign him and keep him. Because otherwise, if you don't keep him, you're going to keep losing wrestlers. As you know, the Iconics... Or the inspiration or whatever they were named just retired they just lost the belts to uh, uh i think they, they didn't they lost the belts of uh, i think the paper before that they never regained it so now they're not wrestling anymore then they left they retired supposedly so that's another tag team that impact is losing again so um also macklin to looks like he's gonna get a big push uh he'll probably be the next guy to wrestle uh Josh Alexander, that's a guy I think you could push him for a couple of months, but you still got to build other people. And supposedly, I think, uh, oh my God, what's the guy from uh, <sighs> Tammy Callahan? Supposed to be coming soon back. And he was out for nine months, and I think he will be back, and he'll be another challenge for Josh Alexander. Um, Dax Howard addresses report about the WWE interest in FTR. And they said, of course, they're going to be interested because now they see what they're doing in the business, winning all these titles, being one of the best tag teams in the world. But there was also a report that FTR was not like behind the scenes of WWE. Why? Because they believe in good wrestling. Because they don't believe in this sports entertainment bullcrap that WWE does. You know what I'm saying? So, but you're still interested, right? Because you know you're trying to take everything that AEW is doing. They don't want AEW to have anything. You know what I'm saying? And FDR kind of brought that up. Said, does WWE want us, to, or do they want AEW to not have us? And I believe that's what WWE. WWE doesn't want them having anything because, you know, if, if AEW is not competition, there was a report going around this week that that WWE is thinking about doing a ranking system. Really. 
funny. Uh, but they think they said I think we know about us as much as everyone else does. This is what FDR said. We left that place because they didn't put a focus on tag team wrestling, and we knew there was a ceiling to where we could go in the company. We wanted to do more. We wanted to be known as the greatest tag team of all time. We had to leave there to do that, and we knew that. That's why we were so insistent on them getting us our releases. Now, I see the screenshots of all different new outlets saying they want to re-sign us, and that's flattering and cool. We got some more time. I told Tony Khan because obviously he heard about it. I told him there is no way. He said it. No way. We would ever talk contract with anybody while we're working with him we have way too much respect for him and i will already mean something i started thinking do they want us or they want or they want AEW to not have us it's cool for cody to do what he's done but there are so many unknowns there will they ever focus on tag team wrestling like we've been able to do in the last two years money's not everything for us i do have a family so i have to take care of them but it's not all about the money it's about what we leave behind for wrestling he says it so well tammy fish sunny comment on about on the fatal crackling she had a seizure according to reports this is not the first time she has claimed that she has had a seizure and she got into accident so sunny right now she should be locked up behind bars that woman should not be nowhere near a car anywhere loose she should be locked up emma w MLW responds to WWE motion to dismiss the lawsuit. WWE is trying to dismiss the lawsuit, claiming that it's not true. They're not trying to manipulate, that they got all these vendors and all that. We all know the WWE did what they did by telling uh, Vice not to bring in MLW. So, you know what? I hope MLW wins. But WWE knows that if that's the case, they have proof. That's what they're trying to dismiss the motion of lawsuits. Because they know they said what they said. So they're trying to escape. We will see what happened with that. Becky Lynch. Women in AEW. I represent the way he, we are. Don't get as much time and I'm as good. You know, this woman got some fucking balls to talk shit. When WWE only concentrate on her and Charlotte Flair. The rest of the division, they don't care. Ronda Rousey was wrestling last night and the woman is garbage. I'm sorry. We can't wrestle. She has no chemistry with anybody. She's garbage. And for her to even win that SmackDown title, it's going to be a disgrace. I mean, that's those belts already. I, I mean, I don't see all these belts are tainted in WWE. I don't. I mean, nobody. The, the, the belts are like hot potato. And this is why I say TNT title is being. They're doing the same shit. So it's unbelievable. Uh, Kenny Omega says he could show up. In December and win wrestler of the year the bar is in shockingly low that's a, a bold statement to make when right now there's a lot of good wrestlers out there and Omega already missed half of the year close to half of the year so I wouldn't be surprised he'd be back in July having some type of thing with either Jay White or Adam Cole can't wait till that happen but that's Omega for you you know New Japan and AEW will open the forbidden door together you know um, of course, New Japan Princess says for being door follow up event in Japan is possible if the man is there. I can see it happen. New Japan and AEW going at it again because there's a lot, a lot of, a lot of dream matches there. You could have Kasusuke Okada against CM Punk. You got Kasusuke Okada against uh, John Moxley or Brian Danielson. Okada's the key, and everybody else is Jay White versus whoever in the roster. So. They say New Japan and Inter will open the Forbidden Door together this June, but what lies on the other side is something we will all have to wait to find out. One guarantee, I always say, that New Japan's wrestlers carry the pride and the fight of wild lions. Whoever they fight against or whoever they even team with, they will carry a fighting spirit that is unmatched and unbeatable. Kosciuszko Okada unsure if there's a need for him to wrestle Kenny Omega again. I mean, why not? Give that match to the fans here in America because their matches in uh, 2016, 2017 were classic, especially the uh, Genesis match back, I believe it was 2017 or 2018, which was an hour and four minutes long. But the, uh, I mean, the wrestling fan here in the United States don't like long matches. That's how, that's the most I hear complaints about, oh, the match was too long. I mean, you want classic? 
those are the type of matches because that keeps you off your chair because you don't know who's going to win. Uh, well, I guess I'm a different breed of wrestling fan. Bret Hart has signed a merchandise deal with WWE. So there you go. They will not, again, will not. Bret Hart will not be managing the FTR in the uh, in AEW. Uh, and now with the Owen Hart um the owen hart uh tournament coming up and starting my, on my birthday may 11th um you know we don't know um i don't know what's gonna happen is he gonna show up did he say yeah i'll do the merchandise deal but you can't i can still go to aew i don't know forbidden door if this <laughs> bret hart could just say hey, look forbidden door i'll go right through there so that i mean they're already selling merchandise bret hart merchandise so he already in there. So I mean, they got some nice little shirt, but I mean, I don't know why Bret Hart. I mean, whether he's not in good terms with it, but if you offer him money, why not? Why not sign? I mean, he's not managing anybody. He's not wrestling anymore. So you know, but WWE trying to find ways to keep people away from the AEW, which is uh, kind of ridiculous. So that is it for me today, guys. Uh, that is all I got for this week. Uh, again, SmackDown was horrible nothing big like i said uh, uh we i spoke to michael j Sarantino about that what they did and no unification match and i don't know why if they're not going to do it uh, i would advise them not to do it to free tv put it in a in a freaking uh money in the bank or something uh, i i don't know but wwe i can't i can't cover them anymore it's just it's just ridiculous and now they look like Drew McIntyre is going to be the next guy to fight, uh, wrestle um, Roman Reigns. But once Roman Reigns get rid of him, who you got? You got nobody else. Nobody else. Omos, Omos is not ready. Okay, They don't have anybody. So, Well, that's it for me, guys. If you want to follow me, you can follow me on the Chokeslam Wrestling Report through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I usually mostly on Twitter, guys. It goes... Uh, Subscribe to this channel, the YouTube channel, the Chokeslam Wrestling Report. Tell your friends. Uh, hit that notification bell for new uploads and hit that thumbs up to support the podcast. Also, you go to my stores, you get merchandise, you get the Chokeslam Wrestling Report t shirts, hats, sweaters, and other merchandise with the logo of the Chokeslam Wrestling Report. And check it out also when you go to tcwart.veryinkpressive.com. You get to listen to the uh, to the video to this part you're going to see this video on my on that website also you could listen to the audio podcast if you like also guys remember uh, this video is also going to be could be heard through the audio podcast of the chokesland wrestling report available at apple spotify uh iheart radio google podcast stitcher and any major audio podcast uh, that you guys like to listen to your favorite show so it's not only on youtube because i know most of you don't be watching youtube you could be doing running or doing you know something and you want to listen to it instead of watching it you could listen to the audio podcast and you could do that um to your best of your ability and you know again i appreciate everything you guys do uh thank you for all those who supported me continue push and share 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 this video let everybody know that the chokesland wrestling report is on audio and on video the same episode every saturday when i get it sometime maybe sunday depending on what i'm doing and what's going on in my life until then guys i hope you enjoy this again i want to give thanks to michael jess Sarantino, turnbuckle tabloids uh um one of the crew members there um again shout out to my boy jay santi who gave me the recommendation to bring in michael j Sarantino. i told him you know he's always welcome to come and give his thoughts um i'm trying to see if i get all three of them at one time so we can all talk about wrestling and that will be coming soon until then guys be safe be um keep yourself healthy and we will see each other next week ciao